Hi, I'm Natalie Bouchard, and you're listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Today's guest is Todd McNoldy. Todd McNoldy is with, uh, Todd, you tell us who you're with. Um, I am with the Research and Policy Bureau here at uh, the North Carolina Department of Labor. We produce statistical products for the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics, that is the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics. We work on a cooperative agreement with Federal BLS. We're North Carolina employees and we work on the Occupational Safety and Health Statistics program. We also produce the Survey of Occupational Injuries and Illnesses. That is a random sample survey of thousands of North Carolina businesses in all industries where we produce estimates of the counts and the incidence rates for those industries in North Carolina. So we sample establishments and from that we produce estimates of our best guess given the data that we've collected of what those industries look like in terms of their occupational injury and illness rates and counts. The injury and illness rate, we talk about that a lot because it's a very important figure and we feel like it's the best barometer for really sizing up the safety and health program in North Carolina. The rate, as you know, for 2017 is 2.3 cases per 100 full-time workers. What I wanted you to kind of speak to today is to break this down for us. We know it's a survey, but speak to that process. The Survey of Occupational Injuries and Illnesses, it's actually uh, about a two to three year process from start to finish. So we produce, we have a a sample frame and that sample frame is all bricks and mortar establishments in the state of North Carolina. We get that from what's known as the Quarterly Census of Employment and Wages. And we draw a sample of about, uh, of over 8,000 establishments in, in every survey period. We draw that about a year beforehand because we notify establishments that they're going to be in the survey. We do that because a lot of these establishments normally wouldn't fill out OSHA 300 logs or or injury and illness information. Uh, You have a lot of restaurants, mom and pop shops. Uh, I had somebody call me the other day who ran uh, a business out of his garage and asked, what is this? Well, it's because we cover more than just what OSHA or OSH might normally cover. Um, we cover all industries in North Carolina, all different sizes. The only establishment that we won't look at are farms with fewer than 10 people. That's it. And so we will survey everyone. And so we inform them a year in advance that they've been selected and that they have to participate. They need to fill out this information and it is mandatory. So the federal government requires that the survey be filled out. And then a year later, we follow up with those uh, establishments and we ask them to fill in their information. So right now, actually today, this afternoon, we are sending out the mailings uh, and email notifications for the 2018 survey. So that happened, uh, we, we drew that sample in 2017 and then we notified businesses and establishments in December of 2017 to keep their information for calendar year 2018. Now it's 2019, we're collecting that information. We're going to do that for the next nine to 10 months. And then we will produce a report on 2018 in late 2019. So from start to finish, we're talking two and a half years um, is the entire process, but it's always ongoing. So uh, we, right now we've we've drawn the 2019 sample. Mm -hmm. Um, We just released the 2017 data and we are about to collect the 2018 data. What kind of response rate do you guys get on the survey? The federal government requires a minimum response rate of at least 85 percent. Okay. Um, It is mandatory and while obviously for obvious reasons there are a a number of reasons why companies can't respond they're out of business. Um, Perhaps the 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 unit that we sampled is not something that we consider in scope so sometimes you have work at home. That's something where if we have somebody who's working out of his house but there's no Uh, actual bricks and mortar establishment in North Carolina and they might be reported on an out-of-state unit Mm -hmm. that's considered out of scope because we don't want duplication Um, we don't want them reported on a North Carolina report if they fall down their stairs when they might report to New York State and then they'd be included on a New York State report Mm -hmm. those are generally excluded we might not have those some just don't respond there is language in in the rule that 
gives BLS the, the authority to conduct this survey where non-respondents can be fined. And, and so uh, non-compliance can lead to fines, ultimately. Okay. Um, we refer those to the Bureau of Labor Statistics for further action. Got it. I was Great just, question. Yeah. I was just curious. Because it is a survey, so it's a little bit different. And one thing I want you to explain, because you, as you know, I'm not a statistician. Todd, our, None of us are, our resident not. statistician, <laughs> always has to reel me in when these figures come out and explain to me that I cannot call it a decline. Even though the number may go down, one way that you explained that to me is you related it to a poll and you talked about the margin of error. And then it was like all of a sudden, okay, well, I get it now. Hmm. But I thought that might be interesting to share with the listeners. With the Survey of Occupational Injuries and Illnesses, we are producing estimates. So we are making our best guess based on the information that we have gathered about this is what the actual population looks like. So it is a sample and it is an estimate from a sample, just like a public opinion poll. So what we saw, for example, was um, in 2016, the uh, overall rate, I believe, or the private sector rate in North Carolina was 2.5 per 100 full-time equivalent employees, and it was 2.3 in 2017. Before we can simply state that that was a decrease from 2.5 to 2.3, we have to take into consideration what's known as sampling error. And, and that is when we have, when we are taking a sample of a population, just like with public opinion polls, we can expect that there's going to be variation from poll to poll. So if you poll people and ask them the same thing, even if it's in the same week, you poll a thousand people and ask them about their opinion on a ballot initiative, you're not going to get the same number from poll to poll. Right. Um, you might get 50% in one poll, 51 in another, 49 in another, in the same week. And that's just sampling error. That's just that based on the sample that you draw from the population, you have an, a chance that it's going to be a little bit different. If you think about public opinion polls, you'll see margin of error around them, plus or minus. So it'll mm -hmm. say 50% plus or minus 2%, which means that that really, that estimate of what the actual population's opinion is, it could range from 48 to 52%. Mm -hmm. And so if you draw over time polls that say it increased from 50 to 51%, mm -hmm. plus or minus 2%, we can't really say that that is a significant difference, that there's really an increase there, because it's possible that the actual population opinion falls somewhere between 50 and 51 percent, that it was always that. By the same token, when you see movement from 2.5 to 2.3, that's not necessarily movement that's driven by an actual decrease in injuries and illnesses, but rather just a difference from the companies that we sampled, maybe a different mix of industries, and it just worked out that due to the fact that samples are different year right. to year, um, right. it was just the population didn't change, but our sample was just different exactly. enough that what we produced was different, but not really different. Mm -hmm. um, and so we talk about significant and non-significant differences there actually was a statistically significant difference between 2016 and 2017. And what that means is that that change from 2.5 to 2.3, it is unlikely to have been due to chance alone. Right. Um, and so that is, there's likely um, an actual change that is, is driving that downward. Great. Thank you. That helps so much. The other thing I wanted you to speak to, it accounts for economic growth. But before you go into that, I do want to point out that the rate has dropped from 4.8 in 2001, okay, this is for private industry, to an all-time low, 2.3 per 100 full-time workers in 2017. Yeah, it, it factors in increases in hours worked in within uh, industry and within the economy in North Carolina and nationally. Um, so the, the rate, a lot of times um, um, people want to look at the count um, and so we also produce um, estimated counts for occupational uh, injuries and illnesses. But you need to take that into context because you also see economic growth over time. So even though you might see an increase in the number of injuries, mm -hmm. if the economy and the number of hours worked in the economy outpaces those, you may actually see a decrease in the rate. 
uh, which is why I think the rate is a, is a more informative and instructive number. And just to give an example, in 2016, the overall public and private estimated count for North Carolina was 89,800 occupational injuries and illnesses, non-fatal occupational injuries and illnesses. In 2017, it was 90,000. Wow. But the rate, the overall public and private sector rate, actually declined from 2.7 per 100 full-time equivalent employees to 2.5. So the count increased, but the rate actually decreased. And that is because while there was a slight increase in that estimated count, the economy expanded and the number of hours worked outpaced the actual increase in the number of, of injuries. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today and explain this. I hope people tune into this because we talk about this number all the time and we had our resident expert to explain it. Yes. And you did a fantastic job. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. Remember, your safety is our priority.